You're watching GRTS and this is the news but first a headlines. APRC militants in the Combo South District renew their allegiance to the party and its leader, President Jame Babili Mansa, at a mass rally in Medina Salam, West Coast region. Health Minister Omar C and the WHO country boss highlights the tremendous gains scored by the Gambia in its anti-malaria campaign as the country joins the rest of the international community to commemorate World Malaria Day. Former Senegalese football star El Hajj Juf describes the Gambia as the land of peace, waxing lyrical about the country's footballing prospects. And Nepal holds a memorial service for the thousands of people killed in a massive earthquake exactly a year ago. But the large number of people still living in temporary shelters raises more questions than answers. Well, viewers, these and other stories coming ahead in this half hour. I am Winifred Nicole. The Minister of Health and Social Welfare, Omar C, and other development partners have been speaking about the gains registered by the Gambia in the fight against malaria. This as the country joined the rest of the world to commemorate World Malaria Day. Kumaba picks up the rest of that story. <laughs> This was the scene of arrival of APRC heavyweights, a mid-drowsy welcomed by hundreds of party militants from the village and And Malaria for Good is the team for this year's World Malaria Day celebrations. The team, which seeks to complement global efforts, also focuses on the prevention and treatment to achieve a comprehensive care intervention. Although commendable progress has been made in preventing malaria, the disease still remains a public health concern and development challenges in Africa and the world at large. Much more needs to be done to achieve our vision of ending malaria in the region. Thankfully, the existing global solidarity for a malaria-free world has been further enhanced through the Sustainable Development Goals to end malaria by 2030. Despite the constraints, the World Health Organization and relevant partners has developed a malaria strategic plan from 2016 to 2030 that is expected to provide a regional platform to coordinate actions towards a malaria-free Africa. A malaria-free Africa is possible through strong coordination and implementation of clear strategies and actions, deployment of effective financing mechanism, and development of processes for tracking progress. This will enhance and leverage existing global and regional solidarity and transform malaria elimination into a continental social movement. According to the Minister of Health and Social Welfare, malaria prevalence in the Gambia has declined more than 90% in all the regions in the country. Malaria mortality has decreased by 60% with 6.2 million lives saved since 2000. Malaria is no longer the leading cause of death of African children. In the Gambia, I am pleased to report that malaria parasite prevalence in 2014 has declined by more than 90% in all the health regions. According to health officials, the elimination of malaria is crucial to achieving the sustainable development goals. But with strong regional collaboration and commitment from the international community, the issue of malaria will be a thing of the past. Kumbaba, Giates News. Hundreds of APRC militants Saturday converged for a mass rally in Medina Salam, West Coast region. The meeting was attended by senior government officials and APRC supporters from across the Combo South District. Ibrahim Ajalo has more. <laughs> This was the scene of arrival of APRC heavyweights, a mid-drowsing welcomed by hundreds of party militants from the village entrance to the meeting grounds, where hundreds of others have already taken their seats. The meeting enabled APRC supporters in the area to renew their loyalty and love for President Jame, acknowledging the numerous developments registered by the government since 1994. The Akal of Madina Salam Sisa Hoture welcomed the gathering. He described the rally as worthy and timely, noting that the Gambian leader has the interests of the citizenry at heart citing a health center and school built in his village as testament to this. Madina Salam APRC Chairman Mohamed Dubayo 
call for unison among party militants, adding that APRC is the party of the people. We love the president and we will continue to do so for the rest of our lives, he concluded. The Council of Cotton Ward Lamin Jam said the APRC party will continue to grow in strength and pleaded with women not to betray the respect and love President Jammy has for them. The governor of West Coast region, Aminata Sifai Hydra, commended the people of Combo South for being united with a view to casting their vote for President Jammy in the 2016 election. Governor Hydra reminded the gathering of some of the achievements brought about by the APRC government, citing road networks, the new airport terminal, hospitals, schools, among others, in contrast to the First Republic. She went on to urge you to desist from flowing false information posted on the internet by angry dissidents residing outside the country. The Minister of Lands and Regional Government, Mamadou Akibayo, thanked the people of Medina for cherishing President Jame. He said President Jame was chosen by God and has raised the Gambian identity higher at the international arena, saying those opposing him always fail in their cause. He promised the people of Medina Salam of electricity and water extension, as highlighted by previous speakers, as basic need for the community. The meeting ended with the people reaffirming their zeal to massively vote for President Jame in the upcoming presidential elections. Ibrahim Ajalo, GRTS News. Former Senegalese superstar and twice African footballer of the year, El Hajjouf, has described the Gambia as the land of peace. The former Liverpool and Blackburn attacker who led Senegal to the quarterfinals of the 2002 World Cup also wax lyrical about the pool of talent at the disposal of Gambian football. Juve was speaking to Giate shortly after watching the Gambians on the 20 beat their Sierra Leonean equivalents 2 0 at the Independence Stadium. Man, they played good football and they so, so, so wonderful. Uh, I hope only one thing they, uh, they look after them so well and they go to the right club because I don't want to see this boy going to. Norway, Sweden, or somewhere else to kill themselves. They so they so good. Seriously, the number three, the number four, they're unbelievable players. And I think so. If Gambian, if uh, the government of Gambian, if the Federation of Football of Gambian look after these boys, they can one day play to the African nation. Why not for the World Cup? So how do you think um, these youngsters should be helped so that they can realize their dreams, so that they can go on to become the likes of Elas Juf? Yeah. Like to go into the right club, going to Europe, like uh, France or England, to play good football, to learn football, to, to learn the highest level. You understand me? And uh, I hope, and like what I said yesterday and that ceremony, and I hope this boy is going to go to the right club and uh, continue to learn how to, how to play good football and continue to learn how highest level need. I'm not like uh, scaring for this boy to go into play in Europe because they're full of talent and now I think so Gambian got the right, 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 right players to go to the African nation and why one, one day to the uh, World Cup. You came through the same process to become the best in Africa. Um, what message do you have for these young ones? To believe themselves, to believe themselves and don't accept what any agent come here to ask them to go to Sweden, Norway and, uh, or Israel, somewhere else like uh, they can play good football and people can see them to, 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 to play good football. I want this boy to go to, like what they say, France or England to play and to, 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 to learn highest level because I tell you the truth, if you look after this, the, these boys, they can play anywhere around the world. If there is one thing that they can draw from you, what is going to be that? Believe and uh, believe and uh, believe themselves. You have been in the Gambia for two days. You arrived yesterday, you attended the Sports Journalist Association Awards. I believe you have been going around. Um, what has been your impression about the country? Uh, it's a great com country, and I don't call uh, this country Gambia. I call, the, I call the country Senegambian, because I'm a Gambian too, because I have family here, and I'm, uh, I'm, I'm sure you got family in Senegal too. Only what I can say in between Senegal and Gambia is Yalnafi Jamiyaga. Yalna fi jam yag ant Senegal and Gambia yalna jam jam rek khat sen digante limay ñaanal Senegal lolu lay ñaanal gambi ndax su gambi amé jam ñu am jam bu Senegal amé jam gambi am jam what do you make of the peace in the country the friendly atmosphere you have been moving freely fans coming to you you know having photos with you they my brothers man they my brothers i'm here to have a good time to to come to look my to come to visit my brothers and sisters and everywhere i go people welcome me and uh, Seriously, uh, I feel like uh, I'm at home. Uh, when I was in Senegal, they're talking about uh, serious things happen here, but uh, no way. 
Thank you very much. The Minister of Health and Social Welfare, Honorable Omar C, and officials of his ministry, hit the road recently for a monitoring and supervisory tour of health facilities in the Upper River region. As the Jata went along, and this is her report. The Health Minister and Entourage Provincial tour was a customary exercise intended to familiarize himself with some of the major programs undertaken by the health sector in the Upper River region. Impressed with the strides made in the provision of primary health care in the area, the health minister said such is what is expected of them taking into account government stance on health. The president made a declaration and we have to implement. We have to take health service to the doorsteps of the citizens. Nobody should travel more than three to five kilometers without having uh, a health center. So we put the system in place, but it's my responsibility also to come and see whether it is working to the way, the way we decide, it is desired. So that's why we have to come around. I didn't tell them I was coming. I, I travel just came to the city and say, oh, let's go to your so they didn't know we are coming in most of the places. So we just have to come and see whether really we are meeting. But Alhamdulillah, for what I've seen, is very encouraging. But some areas we need to reorganize the position. Maternal Child Nutrition Project is one of the programs jointly implemented by the Health Ministry and the National Nutrition Agency, NANA, with financial support from the World Bank. Its primary objective is to provide access to quality health and nutrition services in the intervention areas with practical focus on maternal and child health. Basically on the RBF, uh, resource-based financing for health, um, uh, we have seen remarkable progress in the areas in the project intervention sites. I think uh, the project has come to address um, behavior, some certain behaviors which are, for example, linking to the 16 key family practices, looking at, for example, exclusive breastfeeding. The project also has a competitive advantage, competitive advantage in the sense that it is implemented based on the, uh, on the primary health care strategy. In Yoruba, Baja Kunda, Fatoto, Fode Kunda, Demba Kunda, Garawal, Gambisara, Sabi, Base and Koina Health Centers and other village primary health care centers visited in URR, Kulari Clinic, and Brief. The health minister and team gathered first-hand information on the level of implementation and challenges in the provision of health care services. Communities also gave testimonies of the impact of the RBF project. I've been to most of the minor health centers, major health centers, and from what I've seen, we have dedicated staff on the ground and work is going on well as is expected. Sometimes I have problems in my office, like they will come or they will call and say we have a, we want A, B and C. But this time I was given the opportunity of seeing firsthand. You can only address problems when you know them. So from now on, I can assure them that all what we can do, we will. The National Health Director speaking to GRTS outlined some of the challenges. I'm happy in the sense that they not only sit in the office and see the reports, but once I write a report on any issue, they'll be able to reflect on what is happening on the ground. The challenges are many, but most of them we are able to, to tackle them on the ground as a region and then as a facility and also as a community. Know that these um, health facilities are in the communities. So we also have these academic area committees. They also come into play. The health minister's talk came at the time the health sector is in the process of revitalizing primary health care. The catchment area population is about 27,000, and then we are covering 50, 41 villages, and then most of our common problems are seasonal. These two cannot be just overemphasized because we are almost two years down here in this facility and then we are never given that privilege to meet this type of entourage that include the minister, the honorable minister and his delegations. So I think it comes at the right time so that we discuss about the service areas, the ministry will be aware of what we are doing as a facility, what are some of our constraints and some of the challenges we are facing so that we can put them into discussions and we see forward, we are forward. At the end of the three-day tour, Minister C and team wrapped the visit with a meeting in Basse. 
in which they strategize ways of responding to critical primary health care challenges reported to them. Reporting for GRTS News, I am Aisa Tujada. Dandi Mayo Youth Development Foundation has partnered with other volunteers to organize a massive cleansing exercise in Kawul, Central River Region. As part of efforts to contribute to national development, Kumbaba witnessed the exercise and she now reports. That report by Kumbaba will come in our 10 p.m. news bulletin. We will be back with news from outside the Gambia after this break. Stay tuned. Rewi Gambia. Kailen medical len, lima mos beta ham tuku beta ham dilen ko mui lam. Mui nyari heti juicy nga ham neni. Nyo healthy jamono, ana jamono, masek jamono. Mui lam. Mui mina juice, aglo mina juice. Center five bena la safna te lima chigi na neh mui amu ben after taste. Nyo na body me chami na juice. Dinga amli nga ham na mui mango, orange. Indi li nga ham na mui vinto. Amne lo mina coconut, amne lo mina mango, amne lo mina pineapple, amne nit lo mina strawberry. Why it? Amne yene ni yohamne ni nunchi bi. Te it munga amcha kera ba shop. Ne kicha bando ya karo school ba ni nangu KG5. Te it ngadem sasa rakuna chajulde wa ekati sa telephone ngakol wa kera ba shop. The seven nine four eight four eight six. Te it ngakol nine nine four one seven. Eight six. The teacher could not change your day. Your call go to nine eight two five four two five. Jarama Wakera Basho. Hello, Nijai. Man, my call gay. I only got your birthday. The mother wanted them last for the moment. Level the pass. You're over there. There are some of the little. There are some of the little. There are some of the little. You're not going to have a little. Ah, 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 Ijalie gile gile makol mune kerka dara neko ngalau hulu gina gawo agina or si yone halis moilan akiu sal kuro mobile money si nyu kape ah munga chie yone halis jile chie halis gani na si credit wala gani na si kaspo wala hin chile ah ngene ko muda msi bebe koi ya wa amna bena agent mufane kama muda jista tawar na wana na la yobu si bena wai si agent la gari jista papa yone ko halis ni Mujuk kasih bela one minute. One minute. Wow wow one minute. Sunyuk kalbi mau ayat vali. Wow wow. Amadu, hey Amadu, Amadu baik supaya jangan lereng kain ini bagaikan. Nenjam kasih. Hey Amadu, Amadu. Hey Amadu. Hey hey. Wahy ini ni apa ni? Kusel skudo. Munya yune agjod halis waktu bune fune. Akusel skudo. Munya jenak kredit. Kew power akiu barek bari. So cipu gih hamlu ler. Water chit 133. Cusos Kodo Mobile Money. Sunyu Sim. Sunyu Kalp. Welcome back. Nepal has been holding a memorial service for the thousands of people killed in a massive earthquake a year ago. It devastated homes and historical places and also triggered an avalanche on Mount Everest. International donors have raised billions to help government recover efforts, but with 4 million people still living in temporary shelters, people are asking why, where the money went. Stuck in makeshift camps, living among the ruins. For many survivors, still a reality even one year after the earthquake. I no longer have a house in my home village. Staying here in a plastic tent with the water leaking in is better than that. Others refuse to abandon their wrecked homes. They are determined to rebuild their old lives with their own hands. I'm going to stay here. This quake destroyed everything, but if it's my fate to rebuild my house three times, I'll do it. In the capital Kathmandu, survivors commemorated the victims at Darahara Tower that collapsed during the quake. The Prime Minister also joined the ceremony. But on the sidelines, protests against the government's handling of the catastrophe. International donors have pledged 3.5 billion euros. Critics say political wrangling is slowing reconstruction. But the country's National Recovery Authority, the NRA, says its work will take time. In any government, yeah, doing something, there needs to be some rules, regulation, procedures, yeah. 
when this NRA is established, it, it, it has nothing. The Nepal earthquake killed some 9,000 people and destroyed more than 500,000 homes. A big shock for a small country that it's still recovering from stone by stone. Three years ago, the Rana Plaza collapsed in Bangladesh, killing thousands of people in five garment factories. The disaster highlights the conditions faced by the country's mostly textile workers. In response, the German government has come up with an initiative seeking to ensure safer conditions. But as we hear in this DWTV report, activists say it has not done enough. Michael Pfister knows about his clothes where the materials are from, how much workers are paid. They're made in Western Europe. Rana Plaza. It's now a symbol of how clothes are made for Western firms. Poor safety regulations, very low pay, and textile firms that take no responsibility for their workers. As a response, the German federal government set up the Partnership for Sustainable Textiles. Michael Fista joined early, hoping companies would pay better wages and abolish toxins, but he says it didn't work. I see now the problem is that many of the firms joining the partnership, especially those who do not necessarily pay attention to high production standards, just use the organization to improve their image. Ihr Image und ihre Wahrnehmung zu verbessern. He means companies like Kick and Primark. He says their business models depend on cheap mass production. Yet they're making decisions with companies like Adidas, Otto, and Hugo Boss. The goal is for the 180 members to ensure production is socially and environmentally sustainable. Germany's development minister believes in their resolve. They hope to set common standards by October. The standards remain high. I'm happy that civil society is included in the process, along with a wide range of companies in the industry. Critics say these good intentions are not backed by action, and the minister has even removed a binding deadline to meet the targets. He wanted to save the alliance. Industry said, if we join, we will define the objectives and timelines. And he allowed this, so the industry now has the partnership in the palm of its hand. Michael Pfister agrees. He's so frustrated, he's left the group. We take our second break now. Sports is next. Welcome back. Pa Omar Babu and Omar Job scored a goal each either side of halftime to give Gambia a convincing 4-0 aggregate win over young Leon Stars from Sierra Leone. Up next for the Gambia on the 20 side, a double header with North Africa Giants Morocco. Babakar Senghor has more. And many more to go for Omar Sises on the 20 side as they slowly walk out of way to the Zambia Africa Youth Championship. Sierra Leone on the 20 side were a new match for the young Scorpions. A routine 2 0 win and the Independent Stadium completed a 4 0 route. Two goals either side of half time and saw a comfortable win for the home side, who will be going into the next round of qualifiers. Morocco on the 20 lie in wait for the Gambia youth side. And there, the young Atlas Lions coaching staff made football spying mission a bad job with the head coach spotted ostensibly in amongst these sparsely filled seats of the old stadium. If his mission in Banjul was meant to send a message to the Gambia on the 20 side that Morocco will be a formidable opponent, this was well received. For Morocco, you all pushing me to talk. I'm not saying anything about them because we are yet to, we've been all the time focused on this game. It's just over now. So we have to breathe and think of Morocco game. What I will tell the Gambians is, if you have hope on us, with, by grace of God, we will take that hope with ours and give it to God, and we will work hard. 
Morocco will be an upgrade on Sierra Leone, but the young side themselves look formidable and capable of extending their run in the qualifiers. They have destroyed the young Leon stars without losing sweat. That is testament to the work of the technical staff and the spirit in the camp. These players are up for the fight. Football is all about hard work. We just came here to win back the fans. As you can see, this stadium was not full to capacity. Mm -hmm. But our next game, inshallah, we hope the stadium will be full to capacity. That is what we want. Now that the fans that didn't come to the game, when they hear this course, they will say now, oh, okay, these people can do it. Next game, we'll, come, we'll go to the stadium and support them, inshallah. That's what we need. Confidence is high among both players and coaching staff, and rightly so. And after what was a routine win over Sierra Leone, these players will hope to complete the job and book their place among the continent's finest in Lusaka, Zambia. With that, the youth team and the country can finally banish the demons of the last qualifiers, which ended prematurely against Liberia. For the RTS Sport, this is Babu Karsewa. And before we take leave of you, a recap of the day's main stories. APRC militants in the Combo South District have renewed their allegiance to the APRC and its leadership at a mass rally in Medina Salam, West Coast region. Health Minister Omar C. and the WHO country boss have been highlighting the tremendous gains scored by the Gambia in its anti-malaria campaign as the country joined the rest of the international community to commemorate World Malaria Day. Former Senegalese football star El Hajouf has described the Gambia as the land of peace, waxing lyrical about the country's footballing prospects. And Nepal has been holding a memorial service for the thousands of people killed in a massive earthquake exactly a year ago. But the large number of people still living in temporary shelters is raising more questions than answers. Well, viewers, that was all in this edition of the News at 8. Join me at 10 for another bulletin. Until then, I am your presenter, Winifred Nicole.